Hi, welcome back to another Jamesy Tech YouTube video where in this video I'm going to break down the Cisco Certified Support Technician networking exam, my experience with the exam, what the exam goes over, the pros and the cons of obtaining this test, and comparing it to the Net Plus, CCNA, CSENT, and all that good stuff. So make sure you watch this video to the end so you don't miss out. So this networking exam came out last month, April 2023. The Cybersecurity CCST, as you guys may have heard of, came out earlier in 2022. So that exam is about a year old. This is the networking version of this exam. So I may go over that exam, the cybersecurity one, in another video. I also passed that test. I may go over what that uh, test entails in a future video, but in this one, I'm gonna go over the networking portion. Now, this is a very entry level certification, definitely below the CCNA, where I'm about to go over the overview of the whole test real quick. So if you don't wanna hear all the concepts in the exam, skip to the next timestamp. So first is 1.0, which is the standard. So the TCP IP OSI model and the uh, PDUs of these models, for example, networking layer, packets, data link, frames, that, that kind of stuff, what kind of data goes across each layer. Then we have basic networking protocols like FTP, SSH, basic uh, networking protocols, and then different area networks. So for example, wide area network, uh, local area network, and then we have like storage area network, all kinds of that kind of stuff. And then they have cloud, uh, different cloud and on-site services. So public, private, hybrid, software as a service, platform as a service. So those are things you may get on the exam. The number two is gonna go ahead and be addressing and subnetting. So CIDR notation, slash notation, network names, next network, that kind of stuff. And then different types of IPv6 addresses like multicast, anycast, uh, unique local addresses, uh, link local. And then we have 3.0, which is endpoint and media types, RJ45, RJ11, fiber, and then different endpoints like servers, PCs, Internet of Things, printers, identifying those types of devices. And then how to verify and connect devices. So for example, using a Windows computer, typing an IP config on your command line or using a Mac device or a Linux device, make sure that you know how to verify connectivity on all three of those devices because there are questions on a broad range of connectivity. Then we have infrastructure, which is routing concepts, rack layouts, link light colors, different types of ports, basic routing and switching. And then the next one we have is diagnosing problems. So like different help desk practices and different ways to access and collect data on devices. So console, counseling into devices, SSHing, Telnet. And then the last uh, point, which is 6.0, security. So you have to be able to describe how firewalls can filter traffic. And you have to understand concepts like CIA, AAA, and multi-factor authentication and how those work and what all those acronyms mean. And then a wireless security setting, so like WPA1, 2, 3, why you would use one over the other, WPA Enterprise, why you may want to use that rather than WPA2 Personal, right? Now, a lot of people are trying to compare this to the CSENT, which I personally have not taken the CSENT exam, but I do know that they combine the CSENT with the CCNA to make it one big exam. And I don't think I would compare this to the CSENT. If anything, I feel like it would be easier than the CSENT. So don't get to those two things mixed up. However, you do take the CSENT before the CCNA back in the day. I would advise you would follow that same route with the CCST and the CCNA. However, the CCNA does cover a wide range of topics. And this test is just like the very beginner portions of the CCNA. Now, some benefits of taking the CCST is you can get free online training with Skills for All. If you guys are familiar with that, I'll have links in the description to the overview and the Skills for All. If you guys are interested in taking this and learning, because you don't have to take the exam. You can just go through a free online course and you get a certi uh, certificate of completion once you are done. So that counts for something as well if you don't want to take the actual certification exam. Another thing is you can easily pass this if you're prepping already for the CCNA. For example, I'm prepping for the CCNA. I'm taking it in less than two weeks. And I took this test a couple days ago to sort of gear me up for the CCNA. So if you're prepping for the CCNA, you have been for the past few months, you should be able to pass this test relatively easily. And then um, the cost of exam, the exam is a lot less than a lot of other entry level certifications. For example, the CCNA is like $350. This one is a little north of 100. I think it's around 120. Um, if you, there are some cases where you can get vouchers and take this test for free or at a discounted price. 
So you may be thinking, why CCST? Once again, it is good CCNA prep. It gets you in the mood for taking certification. It is a real certification. You are gonna experience similar questions, not just as broad and as difficult as the CCNA. Another thing is it's very easy to pass. While the CCNA, I believe, is an 850 to pass out of 1,000, this test is only 700 out of 1,000, so relatively easy to pass even if you still are iffy about some of the categories. Um, it is also a good resume builder because uh, Cisco's, uh, Cisco's reputation and it's a good entry level networking cert and it can easily get you noticed by employers. It can possibly land you in the jobs as it states. It states you can get a job in IT support, network support, like a level one internship or networking position you could possibly land with the certification. Now, another thing I've heard is comparing this to the Net Plus. I would not compare this to the Net Plus either. If anything, I feel like the Net Plus is comparable to the CCNA, if anything. I believe if you have some experience with uh, Net Plus, you would probably be able to pass this as well. You would just need to be familiar with some of the Cisco commands, show commands, like show CDP neighbor, those types of things. So now if you have the CCNA certification, I do not advise to take this at all, unless you get a free opportunity to take it, because why not? Some people that went with me on my trip to take this exam, who took this exam, already had their CCNA. They just wanted to check out this exam and pass it, and they were able to pass it. So if you have the CCNA, I wouldn't advise spending $120 on this exam because you already have your CCNA. Um, but if you don't have it, then go ahead and go for it if you have the money to, or you can find vouchers and get it paid for. I would advise taking it. Now, my experience with the exam is I've been studying for the CCNA through Net Networking Academy, NetAcad. I've been studying for the CCNA for around two to three years through my high school's networking class. So my teacher has been teaching me for around three years. So I've been gearing up for the CCNA and I went on a trip to Business Professionals of America's National Leadership Conference. If you guys are familiar with that, I competed in a Cisco uh, event, placed first for my school. So that's fun. I also took a few Certiport exams, which this is ran through Certiport. They were able to, I was able to take this test for pretty much free. You just had to buy a $15 wristband to take these uh, wide range of certifications. And I passed with a 947 out of 1,000. So if you're prepping for the CCNA, you're probably going to get a similar score to me. And then, so yeah, I think that this is a very, very entry level certification. It's a nice thing to have on your resume because, like I said, people who see Cisco, they're like, oh, Cisco. It's a good rep and it's a good resume builder. So in conclusion, it is good practice for the CCNA. However, it is not completely necessary to take if you have the CCNA or the Net Plus, anything like that. I feel like if you had those certifications, those, those would trump this certification. Um, if you could afford it, obviously go for it. And if you could find vouchers, of course, use those and take those to your advantage. Um, and another thing is pairing it with the CCST cybersecurity um, certification is not a bad idea. If anything, I feel like those two certifications go hand in hand. There's relatively similar level certifications. So if you have the cybersecurity one and you want to take the networking one, I feel like those would go very well together, especially for like a resume builder. And lastly, it is a good price compared to other entry level certifications. So in conclusion, it is a good certification. It is fairly easy to pass. Um, I don't know if they have practice tests for this certification yet. Like I said, if you uh, learn through the skills for all uh, free course. I'm sure they have some practice questions on there that you could take. I'll have that link in the description. So if you are interested, go check it out. And if you're interested in any other if you have any other questions about the CCST cybersecurity networking or any just certification questions in general, let me know in the comments. And if this video helped you out, let me know in the comments as well. And let me know if I could make these videos any better. If there's parts I missed, parts I could add on. Let me know in the comments down below. So once again, this is a James E Tech YouTube video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.